What is up guys, Redoubles back here with a brand new video. Today we're gonna play Hoplite, brand new, remade by the way, brand new spells, and we're gonna be doing it on Project Ascension Season 8. And one of the major primary goals for this video is gonna be testing the brand new high risk open world changes, mostly open world. I'm gonna pretend it's high risk. We are going to level from one to 60, only in the open world, no dungeon meta, no BG meta, and we will see if it's fast, if it's worth your time, how many marks of ascension we get from all the questing, how many marks of ascension we get overall and uh, can we even get a viable build utilizing this method or at all with the brand new patch that we went over the other day so we'll see hope you guys enjoy and let's jump right in Okay guys, here we are on my strength based character and today we're going to be trying Hoplite, the brand new version of it with a brand new javelin and impale ability on the bottom part of this tooltip. I'll just go ahead and say, uh, just to make it quick because we've played this before, this is turning my Sinister Strike into a brand new ability called Thrust and my Shield Slam into a brand new ability called Shield Strike, essentially it's SS and Eviscerate. On top of that, just spamming Sinister Strike will uh, actually increase the damage of that ability by 10%, it'll keep stacking. And if I use Blood Rage, I reset the stacks. So there's going to be some synergy with the Blood Rage. There's going to be a lot of SS spam. Tossing out the Shield Slams as quick as we can. I remember that's one thing we figured out about six months plus ago when we last played this build. Because that's big, big damage. But now, we have Javelin and Impaled to look at. So let's take a look. So, Javelin. Throw a Javelin at your target, causing 35 damage and causing your target to become Impaled. Impaling somebody means to bleed them over time. They take additional damage the longer they're Impaled. So I guess i got to keep making sure they're impaled and colossus smash deals additional damage the longer the target is impaled and resets the cooldown on javelin that's really weird to me so i did go ahead and set myself up with the following skill cards aspect of the beast true shot aura wind fury weapon for the wind slam and colossus smash and for the lucky cards shield slam hopefully we get that early skull banner for the crit avenger shield for maybe pvp it could be funny with the silence effect uh so yeah that's what i want to try and ultimately what prompted this was the brand new enchant i got let's see if we can find it real quick uh shield of the emperor and we got this in uh, like a couple videos ago for ascension right this requires shield slam avatar so i hope i get this could be a journey and the impact talent and essentially it says shield slam so for me shield strike now has a chance to proc impact and avatar so if it procs avatar that means i'm procking 15 percent increased physical damage that's already really cool if we can land the avatar and the death wish that's bis now impact means i might have more pvp um, applicability, let's just say, which is fun because personally, I like to be able to PvP more, but I just feel like this season's been kind of a dud. So what this means is that I'll get random 1.5 second fire blast stuns just by playing my class. That could be really neat, but really the main thing is the free damage from the avatar procs. That could be really cool and really fun, especially on a Taran. So another aspect of Hoplite is that it allows you to use a spear in your main hand with a shield, just like the ancient Greek Hoplites that everybody here should love. And like Sparta and stuff like that, if you don't know what I'm talking about. So, I've got my XPR up, I've got my pots and stuff like that. It's been a while since I've personally played Ascension, uh, because I was doing the Dragonflight playthrough. Go ahead and check that out. I did Mythics on it, we leveled a guy all the way to the max level on there. Um, we did some PvP, I played a Shaman. So hopefully Hoplite can be a big change of pace. I know I liked it in the past, it's very well rounded for PvP and PvE in my opinion. Most people don't even look at it for a PvE spec, but maybe the Impale effect is gonna help but even more. I remember I was getting four or five K single target DPS uh, with almost no gear. And this was at the beginning of an expansion once upon a time. Maybe we can actually pull it up real quick with the uh, strength gear I've just got on this guy. And yeah, we'll see. So we're going to talk a little bit in this video. Do you know what I mean? We're going to make it one of those. We're going to level up. We're going to get the 60. We're going to do the mythics because those are out now. The mythic plus probably as well. We're going to do whatever we got to do. Whatever ends up being fun and explore the hoplite build. But as we start killing some boars, I'll just talk a little bit about season eight. You know, one reason I didn't want to do too much on it is because uh, season eight, again, has felt like a little bit of a dud to me. Um, I don't really love the way they went. I think that they kind of lied to us when they said it was the biggest season of all time. It really wasn't. By the way, Impale. Okay, cool. It actually throws the spear. I'll take that. Uh, I needed a big shtick. I needed a brand new way of drafting, you know? You guys noticing this? Look at this. Impale. Look at that skewered like it was really strong actually is the way that that looked to be honest with you that's interesting okay so this is going to be interesting as hell i actually thought this would be cool because i get to actually level like this using the brand new damage trinket i do think the damage hourglass was a really good addition that was smart ascension here's my first draft by the way level 10 lay on hands cat form pick lock 
I'll take the lay on hands for now. Why not? You never know. It could be useful. Kick! That's actually pretty great. We could use kick for some memes. You can see it right here. Your kick ability now knocks players back, and it does actually require battle, defensive, or failing. So once upon a time, it was only battle stance, and I said, bro, what the hell? Y'all aren't even thinking. Why would you not let Spartan kick be used as a hoplite unless you don't know history and you didn't even understand the correlation? They changed it. I don't think it's going to be something we use at max. I've already got my max level REs planned out. Later that same evening. So I'm level 30 right now, and I just realized I didn't start with blood rage. You're an idiot. I'm an idiot. So we have to hope we get it. Or I'm gonna have to do a prestige again, and that's no big deal. The next day. Okay, guys, as I alluded to, we are restarting right now at level one. I think the initial journey was still worthy of talking about, to be honest with you. So we'll just, you know, keep it in the video and we'll go for a Death Wish, Rampage, Wind Fury, Colossus Smash start. Haha, <laughs> Death Wish, bro. Yes, as a melee mate, I'm actually very surprised that I forgot that I had this. I must have got it maybe five days ago. As you know, it's been a while since I did an Ascension video. And uh, yeah, anyway, I put out this last, you know, news based video kind of. I went over the December change log because I'm thinking about just uploading more content. But I was thinking, like, maybe I could step that grind up. <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous, but I was like, what if I just posted way more videos, dude? So you might just straight up see more uploads for me because it should be a lot of fun with the retail videos and the Project Ascension Turtle Wow. Maybe even that uh, Shinobi story thing. We'll do a third video on that probably soon. Okay, guys, we're level 12 right now. That's two abilities, actually. I already looked at this, and I know we're going to go for that Heroic Strike end up just binding it straight up to the thrust, and that should be pretty nice and easy. This one, of course, I couldn't have seen. No auto shot. Conjure food flame shock I'll go conjured food. Like I said, I promised you guys throughout this video, I will not queue for a BG or a dungeon until max level, which means conjure food could actually be relevant like it was in the old days. You'll be questing out in the middle of nowhere, you didn't buy food yet, and boom, you conjure it for yourself. It feels pretty good. Also, I bought some pretty cool spears. I'm kind of excited to use, to be honest with you. Uh, let's see if I can find them right here. Gargoyles by at level 20. That's the earliest I'll get one that's not a vanity spear. So these vanity spears are just transmog stuff, but I'm uh, cheekily using it at level 1 for a strong, you know, low-level polearm. And also, also at level 34 with the Ruthless Shiv, which of course the commonality here is that they both have strength on them, which is what I am on this character. Most spears have agi or just straight up AP. You don't find too many with, uh, you know, honest to God strength on it. So we'll see if we can make that work. Five more Plane Strider beaks. I've done this for three years where I just, you know, showed you guys video clips of me killing Plane Striders. Let's get more levels and let's see what we get and let's get to 20 and let's activate high risk. All right, yo, let's turn this in. Let's see what we get. Boom, level 15. Curse of Weakness Sprint. Ooh, Renew. Do I take the Sprint knowing that I want the Avatar? What else could I want? Heroic Leap actually is way better. I could take it and maybe we'll get lucky with a card swap so we can actually talk some niceness about that system and not just constant shit. Okay, time to kill some zebras. Okay, we are level 16. Taunt, Demoralizing Shout, Lightning Bolt. I'll go for the Demoralizing Shot right now. If we're going to be doing some world questing, reducing the uh, attack AP of everything around me is actually pretty good. As for example, right, I could go in right now, pull all these guys. They're all super weak, but I could do like that. Boom, they all do less damage to me. Thing is, leveling up with a polearm and a shield is kind of broken. You know, like if they ever released a brand new way for me to do a lot of open world stuff, I would highly recommend to all of you to try Hoplite because number one, it's one of the very few things you can play nearly in totality at level one. The only thing you're missing is shield strike, but you could use Eviscerate in the meantime, right? And uh, yeah, it's gonna be really, really strong. And imagine if Spell Reflect was in vanilla. I really wish it was a level 60 ability and not level 66, you know, <laughs> because Spell Reflect is something that the meta, I feel like, needs, you know? Like, imagine. Imagine if Hoplites were just out there spell reflecting everybody's, you know, 3k Frostbolt, 3.5k Starfire. Like, that's what I want right now, is a way to easily reflect some of the broken caster garbage out there. But, we'll see. I think that, uh, based on a lot of feedback, I can only imagine that what the Project Ascension team is doing right now is trying to actually probably go hard into that one idea from Dutch, which was a previous idea from people like me and you, to, uh, create a brand new zone for everybody to level in that, like, funnels everybody together so we can high risk pvp and always have people to fight but get to 1 to 60 fast so that it's viable instead of just the boring dungeon grind um, you know, money-making method for ascension type of thing with the XP pot and our requirement and stuff like that, right? That's the dream, at least, my friends. Okay, and that's level 18. We got TP Moonglade Eviscerate. There we go. That's my low-level combo point spending ability. I'll go ahead and take that. That's my shield strike replacement, as we talked about before. So we can go ahead and uh, bind that. Also, you can see this uh, brand new update to the book that we saw in my last update video. Boom. You can see I got all of the abilities for free just by spawning my book, which is interesting. It's really nice. You don't need any add-ons now. So nobody has 
has like a slight meta advantage over you if they're using a weak RS for it or they're using, uh, let's say, my LVY setup, which is something you guys could all be using right now and that would have automatically learned all of your stuff as well. Okay, and here we are, guys. Another legendary, Disengage. Okay, Mind Blast or Shadow Word Pain. So all of this is garbage. The problem with Disengage is that two legendaries tends to be a solid soft cap. You can get three. You're rarely gonna, I don't think even if you can, get more than three. Let's just pick the Mind Blast. I will keep it on my bar because I could reduce healing with it potentially. And there's a Hand of Protection card swap, but no thank you. I'm just gonna go into anything I can to reduce the energy cost of uh, Sinister Strike. And as we get more levels, things like Vitality are gonna be useful as well. So I can spam Thrust as much as I can. The reason Blood Rage is important, if you don't remember from the old videos, is that you can't actually get the uh, Phalanx Strike effect right there, which is increasing the damage of Thrust by 10% and reducing the energy cost unless you're in the middle of a Blood Rage effect. So that's like really pivotal for this spec right now and like i said who knows if we get into some pvp that's going to be the goal though so i'll just go ahead and put three points into improved mind blast to reduce the healing done on my target by 40 percent and give it some pvp applicability which is good it reminds me of the old days you know okay zebra hooves there we go level 21 we're about to be able to turn on high risk guys that's going to be great okay owatonka and watch Tapani. i used to do these very easy quests you just find a dude out in the open and you kill him real quick for big xp so that's 24 let's see what we get divine protection earthquake wow Weapon Enhancement Mastery. Well, I'm guaranteed the Wind Fury, so that's all basically irrelevant right now, sadly. I mean, like, I guess I could do Divine Protection, but I'm going to get a little worried about, you know, relying on the card swap to get the Avatar. I feel like that's incorrect. I actually feel like I'm better off picking the Earthquake and just considering it a dud. If we do get into a fight and it's a slow fight, the dude doesn't have a lot of bursts, I could Earthquake in the middle of the fight and go for that stun. We have Wash Tapani right here as well. Is that another two levels? One level. Okay, level 25, guys. I'm not going to lie. It's a little sad knowing that in the old days, I could come down here and I knew where everybody was but now nobody's questing around here but let's go to splinter tree post maybe we'll find somebody in ashen vale okay guys so i've been leveling up for a bit we're level 38 right now bunch of abilities to choose from and i uh, haven't found anybody yet but revenge repost or smite i'll go revenge but pretty much a dead roll uh we've also got repost again i have kill rog rupture uh, pretty much garbage i have kill rog all right there we go we've got death wish right there that's actually a big deal i'll take that and we've got dismantled. Oh, I kind of want that. Can I get it? Not, no, 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 never mind. Not for the charge. All right, we have Wind Fury. There we go. Wind Fury weapon right there. That's a really big deal as well. We can use Wind Slam soon. Colossus Smash, which works with the new Impale. More on that later. And Ghost Wolf Explosive Trap Silence. I'll take Silence. That's actually pretty cool. And that's going to be a five second lockout for some casters. XO, I, oh, air, air Totem Mastery is interesting. That's going to see, okay, any Air Totem I can get based on this. Let's just do it. I'm actually curious. I've never chosen it before. Nature Resistance or Wind Fury Totem? I'll go Wind Fury Totem. And, uh, yeah, okay, that's it. So this is actually a pivotal moment. I gotta see if I can beat Gorlash. You know, back in the day, Gorlash was easily soloable. I remember killing him constantly in my videos during my 1-60 to playthroughs where we'd actually PvP the entire time, the entire way. I think that's more because in the old days, I would keep up with my gear more often because we're fighting real people. But when I'm never encountering anybody, it gets a little wishy-washy. I am using my Ruthless Shiv right now, and uh, that's great for the massive of stats. I bought some basic stuff as well. Let's see if we can beat this guy though. Okay, so here's how I'm going to do it. First and foremost, I'm going to get in the water because he's bugged. And so please devs, if you're watching this, fix him so he's not bugged. He will not go on land. He will only stay in the water. I played this game for like four years. He's not always been that way. Let's start off with a quick jab once again to pull him. Go for the earthquake. Why is he stunned? Why, why the hell are you stunned? When did that happen? What is he? Okay, my thing is gone. What? <laughs> See what I mean, dude? I want the XP so bad, though, dude. I'm actually waiting for my cooldowns, because not only is he bugged, but he will kill you. And it's very saddening when it happens. Okay, this time I pulled him once again. We've got this set up. He is weirdly stunned right now. I did not properly go for that uh, handy-dandy Blood Rage early, but that's okay. I reset my Javelin, actually, with the Colossus Smash. Just wanted to try it. I do have a pot right here, so I am going to use it. Please let me kill this guy. Holy crap. Thank goodness. I feel like we had to play pretty decent just to make that happen because of the bugs and the weirdness, but also he got randomly stunned, and I know he got Earthquake stunned, but he was stunned in other ways too. I have still no idea why, but I'll take it. Two quests to turn in. That should be at least bare minimum level 40. Hopefully, we can find somebody in Teneris. And there you go, guys. Level 40. What do we get? We have Blizzard. We have Whirlwind. We have Water Breathing. I'll take the Whirlwind. I don't think I'll use it, but at least it's semi-usable. 18, by the way, out of 25 world quests complete. Shadow Form. Okay, pass on that. So far, I'm at 12, 3, 5, 6. I know I said that number weird, but there you go. For my marks, that means... 
through questing so far, I believe I've only gotten maybe anywhere between 450 and 750 marks, which at best is maybe one extra reroll at max. Is that worth not zipping up all the way to max quickly? Because I'm on my second XP pot right now. Uh, because it can get slow. Of course, I'm sure if you planned it out, you can make it go super fast. But if you're going to plan that kind of stuff out, the real logical question would be, why wouldn't you just do a 1 to 60 dungeon run? Because it's faster and superior in every way, efficiency-wise. So again, like you have to think there has to be a reason to be in the world. That reason is probably high-risking, uh, because it is not going to probably be as fast as just doing a 1 to 60, or as AFK, or as fun, or easy. So I'm just bringing up those things so that when they think about more open-world changes, they remember that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Okay, there's the Blade Flurry at level 42. I lucky carded that, so I got an epic lucky card for the first time in the entire season. I'll take it. That was more of a side thing. I wasn't really, like, too upset or particularly that happy if I got it, but it's a little bit extra AoE with a PvE spec, theoretically, that has horrible AoE, which means it's good. Okay, so I, uh, well, I'll show you the clips just to prove I did it. I leveled all through the open world prestige stuff. I, uh, did all these quests in STV. I then moved on to Tenaris. I then went to Ungoro Crater, and I did all my questing all along the way, very diligently, I would say. And, uh, now here I am, level 60. I didn't see anybody the entire time, but at least we did level in the open world so we can judge if open world questing is good i will say that okay if maybe i pre-planned my journey i didn't have to uh, use two and a half pots to make it happen but if we're thinking about the concept of open world right it's not that crazy to think that it's going to take you maybe an hour and a half or two hours you know and, uh, you know, if you really want to sweat it up once again when it comes to open world leveling, you probably would rather just do it through a dungeon. And it's probably still faster every time in a dungeon all the time anyway. And uh, so that's where we are right now. However, overall, it is more consistent, right, for open world, for doing that prestige daily. I won't lie, this season, if I saw the prestige open world daily, I thought to myself, oh, yikes, I don't want to do this one, you know? And now I won't really feel that way. However, we were able to make it to max with 72 hands of faith. I didn't really notice the marks of ascension that came from the quests. It didn't make a big difference. However, 72 rolls, maybe we can make the hoplite work. I also didn't do any of my rerolls starting at the last one you guys saw. So we're right on par right here. We got a lucky card, shield slam. That's very good. And we've also got Sunder Armor, Healing Touch, Exo. I'll go Healing Touch. I don't even have something like that yet. Arcane Intellect, Multi-Shot, Smite. I will take just randomly Smite right now, I guess. There's the Rampage carded. 5% crit for melee spells. Levitate, Curse of Weakness. Okay, I'll take Levitate. Uh, what do we got here? Card Swap, Curse of Elements. No, thank you. Okay, going on. Overpower, Immolation Trap, Water Totem Mastery. Pretty much garbage. I'll take the Overpower. Rupture, Unstable Affliction, Detect Traps. I'll take that. And we've got Holy Wrath, Greater Heal, Mind Flay. Greater Heal it is. And Fizzle, Arcane Barrage, Wrath. I do have the Silence, but maybe we'll just take the Fizzle. Abolish Curse? Um, some, sometimes, actually, you do want that, but not for Blood Rage. Okay, moving on. Okay, that's all of my level up ones. I've got 72 regular Hands of Fate now to use. Let's see what we get, guys. Ooh. Okay, guys, 72 rolls later, and we didn't get the Avatar, and the build's unplayable. Hey! We got everything else we needed, though, man. It was a literal perfect build otherwise. Got that Fire Blast in there for the Impact proc Rebirth. Awesome for both PvE and PvP. Got things like Shockwave to try to have some fun with. I mean, hey, it's as good as it gets, man. Except we didn't get the Avatar, which is required to play the version of the build that we're going for. Okay. Okay, so we're starting off right now with uh, just trying to make it work anyway. Let's go with that. Because 22 prestiges just to get one ability doesn't sound fun. So I guess we can't try the PvP Shield of the Emperor variant. But we can try Hoplite with the brand new stuff. And we could try it with the Colossus Smash, utilizing the Warbreaker enchant, which does go with the brand new uh, synergy that we have with the Colossus Smash in general with the Impale effect. So Warbreaker makes Colossus Smash AoE. We'll start DPSing with uh, pretty mag gear, but all the enchants are on it, I think, just for something basic so far. Things that boost Sinister Strike crit and damage, uh, Expertise cap, I'm going to put my talents in in a moment. That'll be fine. Sinister Flurry with the Wind Slam, of course. So uh, if you you don't remember what this does this is more aoe when i win fury my next shield slam unleashes furious winds 
dealing damage to everybody around me, plus a baseline 10% increased chance to proc the Wind Fury. We're reducing the cost of my thrust with improved SS. So yeah, okay. Okay, we're in Jadenar for the daily. So boom, one shot. So the idea, of course, is you pop that Blood Rage and you can see up here, I start to build stacks of Failing Strike, increasing my damage and reducing the energy cost of SS. And uh, the idea that I was going to go for is a lengthy Blood Rage so that I can do that for longer. And what that would mean overall is that I'm going to be able to get off more thrusts. And we did this once upon a time. I guess my biggest issue with it right now is that it's not really performing as much as I'd like it to despite the fact that it's exactly what I had before um, in TBC that I did well with, except with a brand new Javelin Toss and Impale and uh, Colossus Smash mechanic attached to it. So I'm a little sus on it right now. Like, we only have two more guys to kill and we're done with the daily, which is pretty good. Okay, so let's just turn this daily in. Let's get some positivity. Please, call board cash. Don't just be greens and garbage blues. Let's say they thought hard and ahead, man. Come on, boom. Okay, well, I got um something. It's it's not good, but I can't complain considering it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So we got the Zandalar Demiani, Demoniac's mantle, dude. I was like, what the hell is that word? Uh, I'll just vendor it all, but it has Stormborn on it, which is not that great, but I won't lie to you guys. I've almost tried to turn this video into like four different videos at this point. Like I almost pivoted to a different guy twice uh, because I didn't want to keep playing the hoplite. <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to show you the DPS real quick, just so I don't blue ball any of you guys by not showing you guys like exactly what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and do it real quick. Okay. So with the version that I'm using right now, if I go ahead and charge in, right? And I go for the Death Wish, we'll go for the Impale, and I'm gonna wait till I get 10 stacks of Skewered before I go for the Colossus Smash. I wanted to act out as if I didn't have combo points, by the way, so it could be more realistic. So at this point, I'm just thrusting, and then going for Shield Strike uh, as much as I can. So I've built this to build combo points. I have Honor Among Thieves. It's exactly like my old school top light builds would have been, which were probably a little bit better for PvP, but like I said, even in the very beginning in TBC, we could do like 5k DPS. It might have been higher, but... Okay, so I just wanted to shut up for a second and focus because I forgot my first Colossus Smash, but we could do the second one right here. Boom. Uh, it doesn't hit that hard. We could actually see the damage. Let's see right here. Where's Colossus Smash? Is it really far down? It only hit for 5k. I guess that's fine, but you can see I am consistent. Uh, 2.5k, exactly what I thought I would be at, despite the fact that we're 62 item level. Now, yes, I am using a Halberk of Smiting PvP and a freaking Tyrant Shield, but that's not going to bring it up by as much as you might think if I were to make both of those like a proper 66-ish item level type of thing, right? 68-ish if I was lucky. This is where you're really going to uh, possibly cry in real life. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the AoE. So the only thing this build has for AoE is, of course, the Warbreaker effect itself, but also Wind Slam procs. So let's go for the Impale. Let's go in. Now let's just keep spamming and uh, hope that we get a handy dandy wind slam proc so you can see that. And when this builds up, and also Warbreaker, it does hit them all. But weirdly enough, it doesn't seem to hit them all for the same amount of damage. Um, because that was really low, if you guys have really paid attention to it the way that I feel like I was. So weirdly enough, of course this is without the death wish, but the single target is almost the exact same as the multi-target. Because the wind slam is so, look at that, it's hitting for like 100. It's like exactly 280, 260 there, okay? It's about as bad as I remember it being. It's a little bit better actually, but still pretty bad. Let's queue for at least one mythic though, and let's just play the build and have some fun. Oh, there we go, insta queue. I hate to do this to you guys. I think I did this on a video that was like 20 minutes long a while back. So this one will be a longer one, but... I just feel like Ascension failed me kind of with Season 8. And I have to try, I actually physically have to try not to, the tank just left, bro. I have to physically try to not be negative because uh, there's too much to be negative about with all the minor lag and everything. Like the amount of times I have to cut out a point where I'm like, this is not fun is too high. Uh, including this one, which I'll probably keep, but still. Anyway, I guess we'll wait for a tank. Yeah, every single person left, so I'll queue again. Can one of you guys that like actually pay attention to the change log and dev updates tell me why you can't queue for a dungeon while inside a dungeon anymore? Like, what is that, bro? I have to Hearthstone to queue. I can't even understand why that would be worthy of changing. Like, who sweated something and exploited something so bad to where they had to say, if you're in a dungeon, you cannot queue for another one. It's like, what? All right, so my favorite dungeon dungeon strat <laughs> we do this one all the time it's like it's guaranteed so i'm gonna spam thrust and we'll just play this out and see uh, how we do if it's at least fun right let's go for feel if we can't exactly go for the best dps in the world let's just go for is it fun to play now i know it is if you could play on tbc go for the high risk back in the old days when it existed wall leveling and all that jazz but is it fun to play right now 
Uh, and can we do... Oh my god, I'm in fourth place behind the tank. You know what? Let's just... Can I get rid of this? Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of details, bro. Just for this one, man. Because what I think I'm gonna do after this video, guys, is I'm gonna go on uh, Retail WoW, and I'm gonna play Mythic Plus, because it just came out. And I'll be sweating it up and trying it hard on that one. So the reason I reacted that way, by the way, to this dungeon is because it's a AoE galore dungeon. And of course, this has no AoE at all. So it's like extra bad with a recount type of add-on. So we're going to go for the impale. Go. Isn't it so much better if you don't have a DPS recount? Like imagine if those just weren't allowed in the game. I feel like I read something one time that said that old original devs of WoW were really irritated that players actually started using a recount add-on. And then, like, it's just like, I, I totally get it. All right, let's go for Timmy the Cruel. Cooldowns popped and pale up. And I, I don't think we're going to be able to get the Colossus Smash off. But honestly, like I said, it's proved to be pretty subpar on the overall. So we'll just keep spamming thrust right now. All right, we've got five combo points into the shield strike. 5k crit, which you know what? Could be worse. It really could. Um, it really could, dude. I'm not even making that up. Let's go for another five point strike. Okay, I think that was a 749. I really hope I'm wrong there. Okay, so we can actually go for an Impale. This Impale will be able to be blown up with a Colossus Strike. We'll see how that works. And he's about to die. Can we at least get this off before he dies right here? 1800 Colossus Smash. Okay. But lucky for me, the main point of this video was to test the new open world changes. I guess you guys already figured it out, right? Like, they weren't very good. They're fine. It's something extra. But most of you are still going to dread the open world daily quests. None of you are going to be incentivized to go into open world or high risk level based on those rewards. But yeah, guys, one thing I highly suggest you do is you go watch my retail video from the other day. Because as you know, my content, I do a lot of things in one video. That makes it very difficult sometimes to like tell you guys what's going to happen in the video with a thumbnail and with like a title sometimes. But in that last video, it's not just basic stuff. We do every mythic dungeon in the game. We do the entire campaign. We do everything with the dragons. We do gold master, uh, you know, dragon writing. Uh, races which is actually pretty fun and I show you guys all of it and uh, I really like it actually like I was doing Mythic Plus with a friend of mine yesterday I was in like top DPS scenarios with low item level and I thought this is what it feels like you know I'm obviously going to keep doing ascension videos and just hope that we get more patches and stuff or something reinvigorates my yearning to uh, want to play but Turtle Wow is definitely something I'm looking at right now uh, Shinobi Story doing maybe an episode 3 like where are they now and uh, possibly more Conquest of Azeroth content as well especially when the 60 alpha comes out but again we know they're going very slow on that i almost did a ranger video and i said you know what let's just wait till the 60 alpha comes out koa servers are in a really weird place because i was under the impression that koa would be out of alpha like six months ago not necessarily for any reason other than it seemed the most reasonable luckily the main dev does agree with me at least on paper when i talked to him about the state of it and uh it looks like even though the alpha for that game was just a money grab to give them a reason to keep working on it that when they're out of alpha we'll probably start seeing some balance probably start seeing some real fun at level 60 with the raids with the dungeons but everything makes more sense to me now like why would they give you gear on the alpha so that you could actually test their classes properly if they don't actually plan to balance it right now because that's actually what it was i didn't realize that they don't have any plans to balance it right now because you'd want everybody to have equal stats so that you could actually test 21 classes against each other rather than make it all over the place based on grinding twinking at level 40 or 50 right but like i thought i was using common sense but not if they're not even in that stage yet i just don't think most of the players playing know that they're not in that stage yet so it's been a little weird okay there we go guys we are done do we get anything good oh i will take that thank you very much it's actually pretty decent all right gg it actually was a hell of a lot more fun not playing with a recount add-on which uh definitely says something so okay some people are gonna be mad at me for this video for not doing as much late game stuff but uh we did a bunch of early game stuff we had a talk we uh tried the new open world stuff it was a bit of a disappointment but we tried it so there's some proof out there for you guys and uh, i'm getting a bunch of pms right now giggle is talking to me about the ascension db thing i'm the only one that seems to care about this besides you guys i'm talking about anything that i can see out there you know it's a small community so it's like really hard to gauge what people want and what they don't want but i'm 
I'm over here like, where's the Ascension database? Where's that website so we have a wow head? Giggles asking the same thing. Now, I got some PMs on Discord. I'll go ahead and show you. So it was actually in the members only Discord. I got this uh, screenshot right here sent to me and another one right here where they put in the teasers channel of the Ascension Discord the uh, idea of a brand new, I'll put the pictures up on the screen now, Ascension database that they must be creating. I think it was a money thing. Oh, I just, I'm not sure to be honest with you. Uh, but I wonder if they want to put ads on the website so that they get all that traffic. But I'm only kind of conspiracy-esque right now because it feels like everything is like that, you know? Only on Ascension right now. So that's a pretty big deal. I'm going to go ahead and do a giveaway in this video. And we're going to go ahead and end it right there because I think I accomplished the point of the video. And uh, hopefully the next Ascension video, we've got like a brand new build, a brand new idea, a brand new bit of fun. And uh, just make sure to like that freaking video, bro. Just show some support because uh, it's a tough dark age right now for the ascension in the channel at least uh and so we could use it okay picking a winner let's see who wins and we've got alexander filipovic i don't know if i said that right but he says i'm never lucky sad face bro relatable in-game name mitrindel okay awesome name by the way so i've got this planned out for you pretty perfectly i've got so much mail from you guys that i need to look at thank you to all of you guys i, I really i'm not trying to be negative on ascension man i enjoyed the beginning of the season i feel extremely bad for how i felt the last week or so about it but uh, I just want to see more and uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do by the way bro is send you a prestigious warhorse a branch of Nordrasil um, a feather of the burning crusade and of Azeroth for this one and also an elemental lodestone for the unleashed elemental grats bro you're not unlucky today McDoubles. GG. So, okay, guys, here's what I want you to do. We're going to go ahead and end this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a like and a subscribe. But also, leave me a comment in the comment section below and let me know how you feel right now. Like, I put up a poll recently. I asked you guys what your main game was, and I believe less than 20% of you said Ascension was your main game. I don't know how to quantify that because it's so insane to me uh, because that's never been how it's been on this channel in the past. It's always over 50% always and uh that's weird and i wonder if ascension is looking at that kind of stuff too because more of you voted by the way than most of the polls recently as well and uh yeah it just feels like the downturn for season eight has already happened about a week ago even though it doesn't really feel stagnant typically until like the three month mark i feel like we got there right after the one month mark so maybe even more than a week at this point and uh yeah i just want to know what you guys think let me know in the comment section below get the discussion going i'm trying to go through my comments and look and stuff more but uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. McDoubles out.